plates burning wine. And they all lifted up the everlasting doors. What kind of dream? What and kind of dream? Of glory, it's a bowl of burning wine. There is a majestic <laughs> entry that he wants Here to make. Here he was. There is a majestic, majestic entry. Burning wine. Because your spirit is configured, is wired to be able to talk to him, to, to reach out to him, to cry to him. You know the Bible says that um, that time has come and now is the time when the true worshiper shall worship the father. Where? So, worship is capable only in spirit. It is your recreated human spirit that has the ability, the capacity to engage God. You see, communication within that realm is what the psalmist tried to describe to us as deep calling onto deep. Um, you will need to press a little further in order for you to begin to understand the things that your spirit is transacting with the spirit of God. You need to press a little further. And that's why you profit maximally when you have a time set in your 24-hour day that is not less than two hours, 40 minutes. And the reason for the two hours, 40 minutes calculation is that the Bible calls what you say the fruit of your lips. If, if, if what you do with your lips is a fruit, uh, there is what we call the principle of first fruit. That means uh, you... you that belongs to God. You know, there are things that belong to God. Now, your first fruits belong to God. So, even, um, I don't want to go there anyway. But two hours, so you need to pay a tight of your 24 hours talking to God. Just talking to Him. Just talking to Him. And you do that as a matter of duty. When it becomes duty and you know that there is no other use for this time other than talking to God. He will know that you have decided to establish a discipline that will make him favorably disposed towards you. And most of your encounters will come during those moments that you have created. Is there room for God in your life? Is there room? Or oh, you are so busy. You are working on two master's degrees. And because of that, you have adequate explanation for your being absent from God's presence. It is Satan that is looking for an opportunity to set you up. Because if an affliction comes upon you, you will stop schooling so that you can recover yourself. Meanwhile, staying without prayer is, is a state of ailment. Because the Bible calls it fainting, your life support. You are, you are hanging on the last strand of the mercy of God. And so he invites us to come into our closet and to shut the door. When you shut the door, he pours out um, the grace to discern. Because God begins to move. You are creating a ripple effect in the realm of the spirit. And there's going to be a response which is not in human language. And your spirit begins to understand the things that God is bringing as feedback. If you press a little more, your mind will begin to understand. Because the idea is that your entire being is supposed to be part of the prayer and enterprise. God will fill up your spirit and the anointing of God will overflow your spirit chamber and begin to influence your thoughts in your mind so that you can begin to think the thoughts of God. That's where the prayer points from heaven will begin to be downloaded into your spirit and your mind will begin to comprehend it and then there is this deep intercourse that is taking place all of that is happening all of that is possible because you shut the door and if you indeed shut the door if you shut the door and you arrive at the point of prayer when you arrive at the point of prayer when the energy of the holy spirit takes over the entire prayer process the prayer process is no longer at your expense but at the expense of the Holy Spirit you begin to glide this gliding you can sustain that gliding for as long as you desire to tarry in the presence of God the greatest profit of prayer is gotten when 
you want to attempt it for long. Please help me preach to your neighbor, shut the door. And for those of you online, shut the door in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that when you have shut the door, then you commune with your father, which is in secret. And thy father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. So the, the man of prayer has a secret that exists between him and God. So men like Simeon that were chief intercessors in the Bible, he came into the temple without a text message, without an email. He showed up the day that Jesus was to be dedicated because God had ordained it before the foundations of the world that the priesthood that would be responsible for Jesus' dedication would not be the Levitical priesthood. And this was the reason why death lost his grip on Simon. Because Simon had a secret from God. And on the strength of that secret that he had received from God, when death comes to his street, death turns backward. He had no covenant with death because he kept his secret that he had shared with God. So he, he came into the temple without a text message. All his age grade people have died. He prayed to die but death left him. Then he came into the temple by the spirit, the Bible says. And the first thing he says when he sees Jesus, he said, let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. It means he wants to die. But death left him. Death forgot him. You want to live long? You need to keep some secrets. <laughs> if, God, if God gives you a secret, it's proof of longevity. Let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen the salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. He asked God, let me die now. My, I, what, what, secret, what do you know from your closet? I, do you have a secret? A secret that God came to share with you. He came from heaven and said, Hey, James, I want to share a secret. You live longer when, you, when God shares secrets with you. My eyes have seen the salvation. Because many secrets that God will share with you, He will give you the privilege to see it come to pass. My eyes. I've seen the salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. So today, the emphasis is come in and shut the door. If you are not disciplined about it, you will never have a prayer life. Come in and shut the door. So that's the summary of what we did yesterday. So when you shut the door, then the things begin to happen in the membrane of your heart. Volcanoes, movements, or songs, spiritual chants begin to flow. Hymns and spiritual songs. You will lose all sense of time because he's going to get you sucked into his realm. When you come out, when he decides to, in fact, he can detain you sometimes. And when he releases you from, from prison, from captivity, and you come out, the devils that were on your case before you went into his presence, the man that is coming out to face them is different from the man that ran into the presence of God. So when you hear the scripture says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run it into it and he is saved. The idea is not to escape danger. It's to go and get fortified in the presence of God. So that he can launch you out to face those same things with a higher dimension of God's impartation on your life. And the story of the victory of the believer never comes to an end if he knows how to go into the closet and how to shut the door. That's where wisdom is found. That's why you are inspired to take a direction. 
that doesn't look logical, but it leads to an advantage by the strategy of the spirit. In that place, you cannot be disadvantaged. In that place, your insufficiency is swallowed up and you have what it takes to prosecute destiny. Just like wisdom was crying in the streets, the voice of God is crying to all his elect in the nations of the world. When will you come into your closet? You are feeble, you are weak. Very soon your insufficiency will be obvious to all. I created you insufficient because in my presence I'm hoping that you will come so that I can galvanize you with my spirit. For the Bible says that it's the spirit of God that helpeth our infirmities. God created you with infirmities because he wants you to find the help that comes from the Holy Ghost. Shut the door. Hallelujah. The storms can come. The rains can come. I will be before his face. And every time you spend there, it's not wasted. Sometimes it takes you into the past and shows you the, the things that were done in your family line that makes demonic presence hang around the corner. Then he gives you wisdom on what to do, on how to pray, on how to decree things that will change that, that mystery and render it powerless. Then you begin to see patterns that were different from previous patterns because you are beginning to learn how to take advantage of what is in the presence of God. Sometimes it takes you into the future and shows you things that have not yet come to pass so that he can make you strategic. He can make you know when to take your journey. He can make you know when to stand, when to sit, when to walk away and when to run. Shut the door because God has something to say. Hallelujah. So Hello, I hope you've been greatly blessed by this sermon. Watch out for our next post and don't forget to subscribe, share and like our videos. Thank you.